This video will demonstrate how to use the Cogent Data Hub to establish a connection to a USB camera and then securely tunnel that data to another computer where we will create a Data Hub web view page that will allow us to view the camera image and control the camera remotely. Let's jump into the demo. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a new camera connection. So I have two cameras. I have an integrated camera on my laptop as well as a um, a camera that's facing outside here. I'm going to set the resolution, uh, something in the middle. We're going to, we want to do two things. We want, we need the image because we're going to tunnel that data and use it in web view. And second, we want to be able to enable or disable the camera remotely. Now, if your camera supports these other features, then you can check all these boxes, make them writable, and then control the camera remotely, um, which which can be done, these are all accessible as data points at that point. Um, we need to put this in the camera domain, and we're going to prefix this with outside. So if you have multiple cameras, you would want to, you could put them all in the same domain or different domains, really domains just a way to group the data, um, but this prefix is yet another way to group the data. So if we click OK, we then want to turn the camera on, click Apply, and if we look at the view data, we should see that it's updating rapidly. This is the base 64 data point that is showing the image. Now, we also have a way to test the image. If we open it up here, you can see we have cars driving by, and this is the shot from outside my office window. And we're right next to the post office, so you might see multiple mail trucks, okay? So let's move this here. Now, the next step that we want to do is I actually want to tunnel this data to that other remote machine and then display it in web view. So let's see if we can put this here, grab our connection to our remote desktop session here. And I'm actually going to make this full screen so that it's easier to read. So when establishing a tunnel, we want to add a master. The master is just my computer. Uh, I know the IP address is uh, 192.168.111.60. The data domain that we are um, tunneling is called camera. And we don't need to use usernames and passwords, although we could. Um, in this case, I'm just going to leave everything else at the default settings. Click OK. Click Apply. And let's just check that we have this data working. So. Looks like the image is updating rapidly like I'd expect. So far, so good, okay? Now, I also am acting as a web server here so that we can actually pull up a web page that shows this camera. Let's maximize this. I'm going to log in with the default admin admin username and password. And I've created a page. Um, I will also show you how to create this page once um, once we get to that. So you can see here we have uh, the camera is working just great. And it's in web view. And I'll show you how I created this page here in a second. Now, we can disable the camera. So if I uncheck this box here, see that car driving by? Oh, we just turned it off. Let's, oh, I didn't, I need to put it in run mode. Oops. Put in run mode, and let's click the box. Luckily, it's windy today, so we should be able to see the camera image freeze, okay? The reason why it freezes is because the data point still exists here, right? The data point is in this camera thing, and it's holding the last known value for the image. So if you wanted to, say, make it a blank image or something else, we have ways to accomplish that and maybe show that the camera's off, so. Um, but in this case, I just made a simple demo where we just freeze the camera. We can then enable the camera again. We can see that this car is just pulling up here. And if we go back, we obviously see that the image is updating. Okay. I mean, the same thing can be done from any HMI. So you could write this value of zero. Hopefully you can tell the camera image has stopped updating. Let's enable it again. And since this data point is writable from any OPC client, we can write to it from anywhere.
right, to enable, disable the camera. That goes with all the other features of controlling the camera as well. Let's stop this, and I'm just going to create a new page. Okay, let's add a control, and we're going to go to the media controls, and we're going to add an image. Make this a little bit bigger, and what we want to do is do a binding, a point binding in this case, to the image data. Uh, the image is called camera colon outside dot image. That's it. Nice and easy. Now we've bound the image to this, uh, or excuse me, this point to this image. Okay. Now the second thing we can do is we can grab a input controls and we can go with a simple checkbox. Pull it down here. And we want to do a point binding to the value. And in this case, we do camera again. It will populate the different options we have, and we just want to use the is enabled. If we click play and uncheck that, you can see that car got stuck behind that bush here, and the camera is stopped again. Okay? So, pretty easy to quickly make a web page that displays this data. Well, hopefully, in this demo, you saw how to both make uh, a connection to the camera, tunnel that data across the network, and then expose that into the web view. Now, given that this data from the camera here is just a, you know, a base 64 encoded image, any HMI or image processing system that can accept that type of image can accept this data point and display the camera.